Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, this is where I talk about my life as a professional artist. Here you can find tutorials, reviews, vlogs, and really everything that, it, that comes down to being a professional career artist and everything that comes with it. And so today we're going to talk about the 2015 MacBook Pro, um, which and we're see like, is it viable in 2019? And so I've been using this book for, since it came out, I got the early 2013 model, I bought, 2015 model, I bought it in June of 2015. And overall, um, is it, a, is, would you, could you buy it now? So if you had, I think it's running for like a thousand dollars now sold or used, is that a good deal? And yes and no. So I use this book literally every moment of every day, um, like almost a disgusting amount because I use it to run my multiple businesses to make all my art on. And then I, you know, when I go home, I use it on all the things that I like use at home. Like I use it to just browse the internet and watch YouTube and all of that. So it's, it's on like 14 hours a day, every day. And it's just like an absolute beast of a workhorse. I've taken it to over a dozen countries, tens of thousands of miles, backpacking everywhere around the world, and it has taken a bruising. Um, I've managed to, to get one of these things on the bottom gone. But, and I, I have some nicks on the side here, but honestly, everything works still amazingly. Um, and it's really not that beat up for, for what it is. Um, the 2015 model is considered to be one of the best because it still has all the ports and I love the ports. I've been afraid to upgrade because I don't want to use those horrible dongles, although eventually I will have to. I will say that it is capable of doing any task that anyone who's not doing like hardcore 3D animations would want to do if as an artist. So it can really do just about everything and I love the form factor of it. I love, you know, the madness of it. The only thing is I don't know if this is because my expectations have changed or if the machine has changed, but I will say that it is kind of slow. Um, you know, I work with files that are like when I do a photo shoot, I, I use Lightroom and you know, if I need to upload a thousand photos or whatever, it's going to take a while. Or if when I'm rendering video, it's going to take a while. And I definitely know that a newer machine would do those a lot faster. And part of the problem with that is the fact that the, the version that I have only has 128 gigabytes of SSD memory. Um, which if you're not really into that, it's not a lot of memory, but it's on like the newer for the time memory system. And so um, it's souped out in other ways. It has the higher processor, it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And so it's like fast enough when you're only doing stuff on it. But unfortunately the memory gets used up really quickly. And that, that kind of memory, that solid state drive was really expensive at the time. And so now you can get it a lot cheaper and you can get a lot more of it. And so I have to use an external hard drive, which is not an SSD drive. And that just makes everything really slow. Another major problem, and I found that this is a problem for a lot of people who use Mac products, is the system memory gets used up. And the system memory could really be anything that's not in a particular folder. So I actually had to go and like take it to a, uh, to the Mac store and have them like fix it because I literally had to totally run out of space on my computer to the point to where I did not have enough space to delete things. And I've had that problem a couple times. And it's not uncommon for me, for someone who has like a 128 gigabyte hard drive to have a hundred gigabytes of system memory. Even though I don't keep anything on my computer, like I don't keep any of my photos on there, I don't keep any videos on there. I, it's really just like, background memory from other programs and, and crap, like, you know, saved stuff from browsing data on Google Chrome and all of that. But it makes running programs really difficult and really impossible. Like, there are a lot of times when I need to open Photoshop 
and the it literally just like won't open because there's just not enough memory on my computer and I can't do my job and then I have to like stop to delete like memory like like you know cache data about my browsing history so that I can go and open Photoshop and do my job and that's kind of a real nightmare um, the cord has been uh, the power cord that it came with they break all the time. I, I love it. I love that, like the kind of mag strip that it has. I haven't tested out the new ones that they use, the USB-C, um, but I love the mag strip. I think that it works really great, except the cord rips, and I've, I've gone through two cords now, and they're really expensive to replace. So, if you were looking to buy a laptop and you were an artist, would you buy a 2015 MacBook Pro? Is it, is it still a good buy in 2019? And I would say yes. Um, my girlfriend recently spent a thousand dollars on a new computer for a new HP laptop. It has similar specs and the the Apple works like my computer even though it's four years old now um, works just as good if not better than hers at all the things. And if you're someone who loves the Mac ecosystem, I would say that this is a great year to go in and get because it has all of those ports, because it has a keyboard that actually works. I think now they're on the fifth generation. Um, and overall, it's, it's, a really, it's a really solid workhorse of a computer. And if you can find one that's in great working condition, I would recommend it. But if you don't care about the Mac ecosystem, you can get you know, a great computer on a Microsoft. So, I hope that answers it. Be sure to comment uh, what computer you use and if you think that this is a good buy. And like that because it really helps the algorithm and I hope that you have a wonderful day.